Welcome to Wheels Boy. The mid-size sedan segment is full of practical, efficient, reasonable options. Your Toyota Camrys, your Honda Accords. But if you were looking to stand out, not blend in, you're kind of out of luck. Until now. Meet the Hong Chi H5. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I say little knockoff Rolls Royce, but that's only a relative term. The H5 measures just a hair short of 5 meters, making it ever so slightly longer than the Camry and the Accord. That applies to the wheelbase as well, which, at 2.92 meters, stretches a bit longer than the Japanese sedans. That gave the Hongqi design team plenty of space to work with, and they used it to cover this thing in chrome and red design elements. You can find those on the front end there, that's the badge, as well as over here to the rear of the quarter panel. Now, these are meant to elicit a red flag. This brand, Hongqi, translates to red flag. Now, since this color is referred to as Hong Chi Hong, that means that this is a red flag covered in red flags, the color of a red flag. Thematic. There's also a bit of a red flag motif here on the taillights, but I promise you, that's the last one. There is no official number for rear cargo space from Hong Chi, but just having a look at it, it seems to be about the same size as a Toyota Camry or Honda Accord. While we're back here, I want to point out these poles right here. These are used to release the rear seat so they can be laid down flat, giving you more storage space. Normally, that's accomplished by a switch on the top of the seat back, but this way, you don't have to walk around and lay down the seats. It does, however, only unlock them. It doesn't actually make them fall down, so you're going to need to use uh, some object to push it over. Then again, if you're going to lay them down in the first place, it means you need space, and it means you probably already have something you can use to do that. Remember when I told you there were no more red flag motifs? I lied. There's another one on the inside. It's actually an extension of the badge up front, and it cuts through the center console like so. The interior of the H5 clearly takes inspiration from electric vehicles, including the standard tablet-style center screen. It measures 12.6 inches, which is relatively small, at least by the ridiculous standards of the Chinese EVs that I usually review. In this context, however, it's more than large enough. The car we borrowed for this review is a Tiffany top spec model, which means it has certain things that lower spec models do not. For example, these are real leather seats with heating, cooling, and massaging. You also have a 12-speaker Dynaudio audio system, as opposed to the 8- or 6-speaker systems in other trim levels. In front of me is an augmented reality heads-up display, and finally, double-pane front-row glass. Material quality is befitting the price. This thing is 32,000 US dollars, and the materials are commensurate, you know? There's soft touch stuff where you need it here on the center console, on the door panels, up here on the dashboard, but there's also some pretty hard plastics, uh, especially around here in the center console. I want to give special attention, however, to these air vents. I quite like this gold trim that they've put here, but this silver, mm, I'm not so sure. One of the first things you learn in fashion and hey, look at me, <laughs> I know fashion, is that you don't mix silver and gold accessories. I would have gone with a pure gold or pure silver look. No double pane glass for rear passengers, but they do get heated seats on this trim level. Considering the wheelbase, you would expect this thing to have a ton of leg room, and you would be correct. I am 1.75 meters taller, about 5 foot 9 inches, and if I fold down this center armrest, pop out some cup holders, I can really lounge. Before I forget, guess what they called this color of interior? If you guessed red flag red, you'd be wrong. This is actually pomegranate. If you are interested in buying this or any other Chinese car and you do not live in the United States, Canada, or a right-hand drive country, feel free to reach out to us via email at sales at wheelsboy.cn. We can help connect you with a reliable exporter of Chinese vehicles.
The H5 is available with a 1.5 liter turbo four, as well as a hybrid version, which adds a front mounted electric motor. This, however, is the most powerful engine option, a two liter turbo four. It makes 165 kilowatts and 340 newton meters of torque. That is backed by an eight speed ASIN automatic transmission, and the combination will push this thing to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.8 seconds. Much like that 12.6 inch center screen, those numbers are not especially impressive, but they're more than good enough to get by. Despite what the front end of this thing would have you believe, this is not a land yacht. In fact, I was expecting it to be very, very similar to the last Hongqi that I drove on the channel, the gargantuan EHS9 SUV, which was very, very soft. I expected this to have kind of a family resemblance to that. Actually, its suspension is much sportier than I was expecting. Don't misquote me, I am not saying that this thing is a sports sedan, but the ride, the steering, the turn in, it's all a bit tighter than I would have predicted. There's not a lot of steering feel, and the power levels aren't mind-blowing, but that eight-speed is actually quite smooth, and this thing doesn't fall completely flat on its face when you throw it into a corner. But I'm torn as to whether that's actually a good thing or not. You see, the other Hongqi's that I reviewed, they delivered that classic wafting experience. You just put on the adaptive cruise control and glide down the highway. The H5, on the other hand, well, it can do the adaptive cruise control part, but it doesn't have the gliding down quite so much. I kind of miss that. This can be blamed in large part to the H5's simpler and cheaper McPherson strut front suspension, but even the way the salesperson at the Hongqi dealership talked about the car made me think they intended it to feel sportier. I'm all about changing with the times, but I hope future Hongqi models don't lose that land yacht vibe that I so enjoy. The Hongqi models that we review tend to elicit a very strong reaction from our audience. There are those of you that really hate these things, and there are those of you that absolutely love them. The people in the latter category don't really seem to care what the people in the first category have to say. As for me, I'm Switzerland here. I'm neutral. All I can tell you is, if you are a baller on a budget, this is probably the mid-size sedan for you.